I got sent home from school one day with a shiner on my eye. Fighting was against the rules and it didn't matter why. When Dad got home, I told that story just like I'd rehearsed. And then stood there on those trembling knees and waited for the worst. And he said, let me tell you a secret about a father's love. Uh, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Ivy. Max to my friends. Some of you know me as the blind blogger or Mr. Midway. And today is a special day for me. I know by the time y'all see this, it will be past the holiday of Father's Day that we celebrate here in the United States. But this weekend, I got to thinking about my dad, mainly because uh, my Aunt Pearl and Uncle Rusty sent us some pictures taking him back in 2002, uh, maybe six months or so before he, before he died of lung cancer. And it got me to thinking of him, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to record this and share some of the things that I've learned from him growing up. Um, as you can tell by the picture I'm going to post with this video, he always had a smile on his face. He had joy in his heart. He uh, loved a great story, laughed a lot, told a good joke. Uh, some people say that I'm a good storyteller. Well, anything that I know about telling stories, I learned from him. And that's just part of it. Uh, he was my hero, my inspiration, my influence. Um, he was the guy that I wanted to be. And I hope that at this point in my life, I'm getting close to being like him. I was lucky enough to spend the last 10 or 11 years working side by side with him, uh, living with him, uh, learning from his example, and uh, doing our best together to uh, help build a business. And, uh, you know, after he passed on me and my brother Patrick, we tried to keep the carnival going, and we were successful in that for about three years until at some point the insurance premiums just got so high that we had to join up with my uncle's carnival. I never really liked that idea. It uh, sent me into a bit of a depression and it affected my health, both uh, physical and mental. I got to the point where I was basically just showing up and going through the motions because I didn't know where else I was going to go next. But, you know, as I started to get physically healthy, I started to remember things that my dad taught me. And he definitely believed in having a goal and doing the hard work that it took to achieve the goal. I think one of the proudest moments he had for me was on August 22nd, 1984, when he was at the court of honor for my, uh, when I received the Eagle Scout Award, the first visually impaired person to do that in the Southeastern Council of the uh, Boy Scouts of America, which is, excuse me, the Sam Houston Area Council, which is mostly Southeast Texas. Um, it took almost four years to con complete it. And f that was one of the few times that the city, the Houston Chronicle and Houston Post actually covered uh, someone receiving their Eagle Scout Award. And like I say, I think he was very proud of me, and I think he would be proud of what I'm doing today. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly where I want to be yet, but I get up every day and I work hard and I believe in what I'm doing, and I think he would be proud of that. He raised me to be a tough kid, which was a good thing, because I was always bumping into stuff and falling down. Uh, between the ages of 4 and 12, I once cut my head open and had to have stitches. Another time I stepped on a board and drove a nail straight through my foot. And another time I was attacked by German Shepherd and mauled. Funny thing is that German Shepherd was supposed to be guarding our truck. Um, he also raised me up to believe that there isn't anything I couldn't do if I just, if I wanted it bad enough. He didn't uh, put any limits on me because of my visual problems. And that did sometimes cause him problems because sometimes he'd realize later that maybe he should have discouraged me a little bit. Um, my brother had a moped, and mopeds don't go very fast, so he would let me ride it. And it kept having mechanical problems. We only found out a few years ago that my dad used to break the moped. He used to do stuff to it so it wouldn't run because he was afraid I was going to hurt myself on it. He couldn't not tell me. He couldn't tell me not to ride it, and you know he had, 
had always encouraged me to, to do as much as I could and and uh, be as adventuresome as possible, but he was kind of stuck there. So, um, and I, I kind of think it's funny. It uh, shows you the kind of man he was. He wasn't going to discourage me, but at the same time, he wanted me to be safe. And while I don't know how much time my dad ever spent in church, he definitely understood the whole concept of the golden rule of treating other people the way you wanted to be treated. And uh, when he died, people came from all over the state, and some people came from across the country to be there at his funeral. I've never run across a person who had a bad word to say about my dad. And I think it's a tribute to him that the events that we used to have contracts for they still ask us to come to their fairs and provide the carnival, even though they know that we have to book the rides from other people, usually friends or family in the business, but they know that we don't have a ride, a generator, or even a ticket box, but they still want the Ivies there. And I think that's a real tribute to him, and it's the way I hope to be remembered at some point. Uh, but I think the best thing that he taught me was that you can do just about anything you have to if you believe that you don't have a choice. Um, back when me and him were doing most of this work, um, there wasn't really a lot of people with cell phones yet. Uh, we had one cell phone, whereas nowadays most every family's got one for each member and some people got a tablet for each person too. Um, we also only had, uh, I only got a computer right about the time that he died. And you know, a computer that would had speech on it was a pretty serious investment at that time. Um, even with a Windows computer, I think it was about $2,200, $2,300 we spent. Um, and I, I, this is one of my favorite stories that I think we'll show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, we set up at a event in Shreveport called the Red River Rally and a tropical storm came in. It rained for days. The military had to help haul people's trucks off the lot and we couldn't get all our rides out of there we had to leave two there uh, a play port called the raiders and a key airplane ride called the rocket sled and about three weeks later me and my dad we went back after those two rides while everybody else was setting up for the next event we got there the lot was still muddy he took some boards and some planks and laid them down and backed the truck a few feet at a time and then would move the boards and back it a few more feet until he got it underneath the uh, end of the of the play ports trailer the rocket sled ride was what's called a ground mount ride which means you assemble it by hand we had no trouble getting it apart but then we had to figure out where to load it we loaded the steel from the center on the flatbed truck that we we're going to pull the trailer with but we had to find somewhere to load the the planes or the cars or tubs whatever you want to call them uh, my dad started noticing that up on the top half of this trailer, there was room to load the tubs. But in order to do that, we would have to lift them above our heads. Now, he's, he was 6'2 or 6'3. I'm 6'4, 6'5. So that wasn't really the problem. The problem was is that being as fat as I was, whenever we tried to lift the planes up above our heads, my pants would fall down. And I'd lift They'd fall down, we'd, we'd set the tub back down on the ground, I'd pull my pants up again. About the third or fourth time, I told him just forget about it, and we lifted the plane up, walked it over, set it down on top of the second level of the play port. We did that three or four more times till all the planes were loaded. Then we got in the truck and headed back home. When we got back to Beaumont or Houston, where we were that week, somebody said, how did y'all manage to do that? My dad said, well, it wasn't like we could leave it there. And that was his attitude. We went out on more than one occasion with the idea that we had no choice but to do whatever we could think of, to, to beg, to borrow, to steal, to imagine, to create, uh, to use things in ways that they wouldn't normally be used. As long as we got to the next town, it was a success. It was a good week if you could get open again next week. And 40 to 50 weeks a year, that's what me and him did. Uh, we also worked together in the winter to do the bookings. And that's a whole other juggling act I'll tell you about some other time because I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. I just want you all to know how much I loved him. He was a great man, wonderful dad. 
he did great when you consider that you know raising a kid that's got a visual impairment in a business where you hope that he'll take over for you someday that couldn't have been easy but he sure as heck made it look easy he made me feel uh, just like my other two brothers and I really want to thank him I hope he knows just how much I appreciate it I really miss him I really love him and well that's about all I got to say about it at this time um, I hope you've enjoyed this video if you did please leave a comment or share it with your friends uh, if you have questions just ask if there's suggestions for future episodes please send them in to me because I always love new ideas for for future shows or future posts and until next time I want to thank you for watching or listening reading however you manage to to follow me along here I want to thank you and God bless you and you take care out there now uh, bye it's a love without end amen it's a love without end amen And he said, let me tell you a secret about a father's love. A secret that my daddy said was just between us. He said, daddies don't just love their children every now and then. It's a love without end, amen. It's a love without end, amen.